All right, today we will create a Fusion Macro template for bounce and elastic effects, which can be used to reveal text titles or images in the edit page. Here in the timeline, we have a text title called Bounce, and we will add a bouncing effect to the title. Select the title clip and go to the Fusion page. Drag a transform node from the toolbar, move over to the connecting line, release the mouse button when the line color changes, which automatically inserts the node between the template and media out node. Make sure the transform node is selected. Go to the inspector. In the transform section, right click the center parameter label to bring up the context menu and choose modify with vector result. Go to the modifiers tab. The parameters of the vector modifier are self-explanatory by their names. Instead of changing the position by x and y values, we can change the position by simply adjusting the distance. Or changing the angle. Since we are building a fall and bounce effect, we set the angle to 90 degrees. Changing the distance moves the title up and down. Right-click the distance label and choose Modify with Anim Curves. Inside this Anim curve section, leave the Source option as Transition, change the curve to Easing. And we see two drop-downs are shown below, with interpolation presets for both the start of the curve and the end of the curve, which is in and out. As we will be revealing the title from above the screen, to its current position, the animation we want to add is at the end of the curve, which is the Out option. Select Bounce from the Out drop-down list and play the clip. But instead of falling, the text is rising from the bottom. Because the animation values are controlled by the scaling parameters. The offset is the starting value of the animation and the scale represents the ending value. In this case the distance is changing from 0 to 1, which moves the title away from its original position which is why we see the title rising instead of falling. To correct this, we just need to check the invert option. And it's now working as expected. But the animation is running for the full duration from the beginning to the end of the clip. The timing parameters are used to control when and how fast the animation runs. The time scale can adjust the speed of the animation and the time offset controls when to start the animation. For example, setting the time scale to 2 will cause the animation to run 2 times faster, so that the animation finishes in the middle of the clip. If we set the time offset to 0.5, the animation will start after it's midway through the clip. As default values, we set the time scale to 4 and time offset to 0, which set the reveal animation to take place for the first quarter of the clip duration. If we zoom out the viewer, we found the title's starting position is too far from the edge of the screen and caused nothing visible for the first 10 frames. We can reduce the scale value to get a result we like. In this example, we set it to 0.5. Now we have the animation for revealing the title. Next, we will create an ending transition to move the title out of screen. Similarly, drag and insert another transform node from the toolbar to the editor. Modify the center parameter with vector result. Go to the modifiers tab in the inspector, add anim curves modifier for the distance parameter of the vector. Set the vector angle to 90. Change curve option to easing. Since this is for the ending transition, we select the bounce curve from the in drop down list. As this transition is to moving the title out of screen, we keep the invert option unchecked. Change the scale to 0.5. The ending animation should only run at the end, we set the time scale to 4 and the time offset to 0.75 so that the animation will take place for the last quarter of the clip duration.
If we want the title to continue falling down and disappear from the bottom of the screen, we can change the scale to a negative value, for example minus 0.5. We can also change the animation curve for the ending transition, for example set the curve to Expo, and we get a very smooth animation of the title falling down. If we want to adjust the time offset value based on the time scale, we can use an expression for the time offset parameter. This expression will set the offset properly and make sure the ending transition always completes at the end. To make the transition smooth, we can enable the motion blur for the transform nodes. Adjust the quality value to get a feel to our liking. Instead of making changes separately on each node, we will link motion blur options of the second transform node to the first one. Select Transform 2 node, go to the Settings tab in the inspector, right-click the motion blur, select Expression. To link the motion blur in the other node using a pick whip, control click the Transform 1 node to select both transform nodes, so that they both are available in the inspector panel. Drag a whip from Add button to Transform 1, hold the button until it opens, continue dragging the whip to the motion blur parameter in Transform 1, release the button, and the motion blur parameter is now connected to Transform 1. To enable the expression for a parameter with input field, we can enter equals sign in the field. Here we also link the quality parameter to the one in Transform 1 node. We've now completed the fusion composition of the bouncing effect. Next, we will save it as a macro template for use in the edit page. Make sure both transform nodes are selected, right-click one of them, choose macro, create macro. In the macro editor, enter essential bounce effect as the macro name. Check the parameters we want to show in the inspector panel. Motion blur, and quality from the Transform 1 node. Transition angle from the first vector modifier. Since we have two transitions for this effect, we will name the parameters within or out as prefixes. In the Anim Curve section, we name the Ease Out parameter as in Style. Scale as in Distance. Time Scale as in Speed. Select the same parameters for the second transition effect, name them as out angle. Out style. Out distance. And out speed. From the file menu, select save as group. Save to fusion. Templates. Edit. Effects folder. Close the macro editor and go back to the edit page. Add a logo to the timeline, resize the logo, so that it fits in the center of the screen. From the effect library, find the effect we just created, and drag it to the logo clip. Right away, we have the falling in and out transitions applied to the logo. In the effects page of the logo's inspector panel, the parameters we selected are displayed, and we can adjust the values to change the look and feel of the animations. For example, enable or disable the motion blur. Change the curve styles. Change the transition angles. Adjust the animation speed, and so on. If we want to disable the animation entirely, we can set the distance to zero. For example, with the in distance set to zero, the transition in animation is no longer running. Now we have an effect that can be easily applied to any type of clips in the edit page to reveal or hide objects with nice bounce or elastic animations. Okay, 
This is all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.